New World Witchery is a Patreon-supported podcast. This episode is supported by our listener, Donna. Our immense thanks to Donna for providing the power to charge our magical amulet to reverse the curse that transformed Cory into a Bichon Frise recently. Good news, it mostly worked. Bad news, Cory takes all his meals on the floor now. If you'd like to become a patron and help support the show while also getting some great perks, please visit www.patreon.com slash newworldwitchery, where you can pledge a dollar a month or whatever you can to help us get Corey properly housebroken sometime in the near future. <laughs> and thanks to all of our listeners. Are you looking for magic? Maybe magic that lives right where you do? If so, join us aboard our broomsticks and ride with us from the Atlantic to the Pacific, from the Yukon to the Yucatan, and find magic that's right outside your front door or just off of Route 66. Whether you're in the Windy City or the Crescent City, the city that never sleeps, or the city of brotherly love, we've got enchantment for you. I'm Corey. And I'm Lane. And this is New World Witchery. This episode is all about Sesrook. That's curses spelled backwards, because we're talking about jinx breaking, curse lifting, and other vital counter spells. How's your sesra clean? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. I guess. It's been a minute. How are you doing? Mm-hmm. Uh, a little better today, actually, I think. You sound better. Definitely sound a little clearer. Yeah. Uh, so it was. it's kind of been my health inspired by the, this this episode so just because i've not yeah. felt great this whole year basically and i've just i finally was like Corey, <laughs> i've i've been through like three rounds of antibiotics can you come over and just do like an egg cleansing <laughs> <laughs> or something and he was like yeah let's do it and we <laughs> did <laughs> yeah so. we did yeah. So we had, uh, we did that actually last night and we've been, you know, kind of bouncing around some ideas and the curse breaking seemed like a good one. We both have had, I mean, if, if you've been following us on pretty much anything, particularly if you're on our discord or if you're in our Patreon support, then you know that there's been a lot of kind of like chaos and stuff like that kind of going on. And so in some ways it can feel a little cursed <laughs> and we're going to be, we're going to try and clarify some things about that too. Cause we do also want to you know make sure people understand that like, there's a difference between a curse and just kind of having a, a bad day kind of a thing. But we also thought it would be really, really fun to talk about, you know, we've talked about, you know, curses and stuff on the show before quite a while ago. And uh, we occasionally kind of get into this idea of sort of breaking spells of bad luck and, and stuff like that, but we haven't done just kind of a focused curse breaking episode. So we thought we'd kind of dive in on that and talk about some methods that we have used as well as some that we know about a little bit and just kind of get into that. So that's where we're going. Mm-hmm. So do you want to, do you want to tell a little bit about the, the egg cleansing? Cause I guess that's where we'll start since that's the one we've done most recently. Yeah. I've just been, you know, like nasal infection type stuff. I'm sure you can hear like a difference in my voice. I, I just don't sound as clear, I guess, as I normally do. And it's just been a rough year and it's gone by really quickly. I feel like it's kind of passed me by cause I've been in like a, fugue or something like it just I don't know it's just not been not been great so yeah I really wanted something that was just like a like you said a cleansing just kind of a felt like a fresh start or something and what better time than right before Thanksgiving (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) but honestly like you know the the best time is like what is it what's the saying yesterday and I guess the second best time is like right now so yeah yeah. do it when you can and when you feel up to it and that's what we did Yeah, I mean, and I mean, we have extra eggs on hand because it's the holidays. So mm-hmm. why not, you know, mm-hmm. doing all that baking? But yeah, no, I mean, it's, it, and it does, there's that sort of sense of like, though, the holidays can be a really stressful time. So if you can, if you're going into the holidays already feeling kind of like you're, you're treading water, it's a good idea to maybe find ways to, you know, sever some of that a little bit, but. So the egg cleansing, though, I should say, so one, the one that I do is a, it's kind of uh, modified from one that I learned f- from training that I got from somebody who was a curandero. And I will say that, like, I'm not trying to, st- I'm not trying to speak out of turn about this because that is, you know, culturally 
found practice. And so I'm calling it an egg cleansing and not Olympia for that reason. Egg cleansings do show up in a few different cultures, oftentimes involving kind of just rolling the egg around the person and sort of removing curses. And then, you know, I just don't want to like people to think that I'm like trying to Bogart Curandero methods or anything like that and then make them my own or, you know, pretend that I am, you know, the king of the Curanderos. Like, not at all. That's not the case. <laughs> but I, you know, I did, you know, receive training in this, learned how to do this method and then kind of have, you know, use this method. And I'm very cautious about, you know, using kind of the culturally bound version of it specifically. So I use kind of a modified version that I, I do feel more comfortable with is sort of from, from my background, but we did that. And it really all it involves the way I do it. I generally try not to touch the person too much with the egg while I'm moving over them because I don't want I don't want people to feel uncomfortable. Like I'm kind of like pushing I, one. I have very big beefy man hands. And so if I'm holding an <laughs> egg, like, and I try to rub it delicately over you, it's basically like there is an egg in there, but it's mostly meat. You know, It's mostly hand meat that's touching a person. And I don't, and that's probably the least uh, pleasant way of phrasing that. It really is. <laughs> I'm sorry my hand meat touched you. <laughs> it, it was fine until you said it like that. <laughs> but anyway, so it's just one of those things where I don't want to like be touching somebody inappropriately or make them feel uncomfortable because that's the whole, the whole point of this is not to do that. It's to right. be stripping away this stuff. But I do have um, the person like, like for last night I had you hold the egg first and touch it against your solar plexus while you breathed as a sort of way to kind of get you physically connected with it. And then I do use it at the very end. I will do a little bit of sealing, sealing work where I'll kind of make marks on the person with the tip of the egg in a few key places as a way to kind of seal off any more negative stuff from coming in after I've sort of stripped everything out, put it into the egg. And then we read the egg very similar to, you know, a Venus glass method that would have been around in colonial New England and other places too. So, and last night you okay. had a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. It was like an interesting bubble that was around the, whatever that's called, like the, like, is it like film? a veil? Yeah, the film that covers yeah, the yeah, amniotic sac, yeah. basically. Yeah, that's pretty gross. <laughs> yeah. It was it was very interesting. It looked like it was, like, trapped or something. And I don't know. I, I, it's It feels weird talking about it because it's, like, my reading. So, it, it I don't know. Can you talk about yeah. it more? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't necessarily want to, like, get into because it's so personal to each person. And yeah, I don't want to, like, yeah. you to have to go into specific detail. But we did see something. We saw this kind of little figure and we worked with it and, you know, tried to figure out kind of what this could be. What does this mean? I will also say one of the things that you and I did before this, we did a reading. We did a tarot, mm -hmm. um, which I think yeah. is important. So, And it was very accurate. Mm -hmm. And like stuff that you had no way of knowing, you kind of brought up and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I do want to say like part of, I think part of what works in this process is that you know, we had a chance to, and not that, not that this takes the place of therapy and we'll talk about that later, but like, yeah, you have it, having the opportunity to talk about issues and then do something about them is a big part of why this is so important. Why this, this can work in some cases is that you get to vocalize and then physicalize with something that feels, feels like it's, it's weighing on you. And mm -hmm. I think that that can be very helpful for sort of expurgating it, you know? But I don't for know, what? For expurgating it. What is that word? I've never heard. P -p Purging out of. Okay. Yeah. I like it. All right. Expurgation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, did I make up a word? But I'm fairly sure it's a real word. I mean, I believe you. I just, I, like I said, I'd never heard it. Yeah. yeah no, I, I appreciate that. And yeah, it was, it was really helpful to be able to kind of hear things from your perspective and yeah, talk it out a little bit. And I mean, I remember I told you last night, I was like, man, just getting that out. I can feel my shoulders relaxing a little bit, yeah. <laughs> moving away from my ears. Like everybody listening right now, unclench your jaw, mm -hmm. <laughs> relax your shoulders. <laughs> yes. You deep go. breaths, deep breaths. It does help. You know, it can be a very it helpful does. thing. Again, does not take the place of actual counseling or um, mental health professionals, but like yeah. We'll, I mean, we'll and you know what? That. You could, you could tell me it's a complete placebo. All it does is like prime your mind. And I'm like, yep, my mind is part of my body. I'm good that with that. We're good. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's <yeah>. go. <laughs> yeah. Not arguing for the scientific validity of this, just saying that 
in our experience, it can be very useful. Right. And, and that these are kind of the components that we think make sense. So, right. So, yeah, so that's one. Another one that I've used recently, we had Mystic South over the summer. And while we were down there, we got to meet several of our listeners. And one of our listeners, I believe it was Kells. I'm 99% sure it was Kells. Gave us bars of Concred soap, basically. Which were these <laughs> soaps that they had handmade that had... One of the main things in it is hyssop. And I, that's one that I, I use a lot is this, this hyssop herb because it is ritually cleansing. But there's a lot of stuff in it. And like you use it to wash. And I still have it. And all, what I'll do is like... Every once in a while, I'll break it out. And, and importantly, I use it. It's, it's a soap bar, so you can use it just like soap. But I always like actually wash myself first and then do this as a sort of second run. As a oh, sort of okay. Strip off anything that I think spiritually could be connected to me. If I feel like I'm, if I feel like I'm in a really bad mood, for example, or if I feel like mm-hmm. I've got, you know, a lot of pressure on me about something, sometimes I'll do this. And it's great because it's, sh- it's shower ready and I don't have to actually bath. I don't have to actually have a bath for it, so. Right. Yeah, it's not like a bath bomb that you have to sit in or something. Exactly. Which, don't get me wrong, can be nice, but yeah, they, it's like a whole production. Sometimes I just need to hop in the shower. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's nice to have methods. And, and cleansing and bathing is such an effective way to, mm-hmm. to, to help remove, you know, bad things because one, it's relaxing. And two, you really feel like, you know, you soak in something, you step out of it, everything gets left behind in that tub. Mm-hmm. so and showering can do that too showering is like like if you've ever been on like you know a long trip or you know you've just worked really hard for a day like the thing that you look forward to is just getting in that shower you know? for me for sure yes yeah. letting that water run over you so yeah so yeah did you wind up i, I think we each got a bar of the soap right mm-hmm. yeah i got one too yeah do you use yours for anything yet just a few times in general, kind of like a, I, I don't know. I just felt like using it. Sometimes that's the best reason, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. But now I, the, I, now that I have like an idea of what to do with more intentionality, I feel like that's what I'll do. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's one of those ones where like the other kind of nice thing about it is like you could use it as like a, even a hand washing soap. And still let like sort of remove some of the stuff from your, from your day, just washing your hands or your face with it or something. So, right. It does use, like I said, hyssop is kind of the main thing. Cause there's the, so there's a passage. If you're ever doing biblically based magic, magic, I think it's Psalm 51 or 52. I can't remember which, but it's cleanse me with hyssop and I shall be purged. Wash me and I shall be white as snow. And it's this idea of being purged of in, in, the biblical sense is like sin or wrongdoing or again, kind of things that are plaguing you, but this is sort of just re- removing that from you and washing it away and you leave yourself sort of cleansed. So mm-hmm. I can imagine mixing that with actual snow, mm-hmm. taking that into the shower would be, would be nice. <laughs> very bracing. <laughs> very, well, very I mean, I, not necessarily like the frozen, like the, you know, the, <laughs> The snow form of snow, like let it melt. Oh, oh, you were using slang for cocaine. Yeah, no, that would also be. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know, yeah. Elaine and her her slang for cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Just do, do a line in the shower. <laughs> I feel cleansed. Let's go. No, please don't do cocaine in the shower please. or anywhere else. No. Frankly, <laughs> I mean, you right. live your own lives. I don't care, but like, like, please be safe. Please be good to yourselves. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. Okay, so other ritual baths, I you know, mentioned hyssop. I do do hyssop ones, sometimes hyssop and Epsom salt. I'll mix hyssop herb and Epsom salt and make a sort of a tea out of it, or tisan, I guess is the technical term. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, no, quite fancy. I made a tisan. <laughs> I just got this amazing, like, smoking jacket, tuxedo jacket, by the way, that I have to Did have you? To yes. Like, you're going to look at you, you're going to be like, oh my God, who is this person? No, I'll be like, this has been you all along and you're finally realizing your potential. You're like, where <laughs> is your pipe, sir? Where is your monocle? <laughs> like, I'm going down to the grotto to hang with the bunnies. So. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Okay. So yeah. But yeah, his sip is one I use with salt. And I also have done in the past a black walnut bath as a cleansing thing. And that mm. is... That one's basically done as a cut and clear. Like it will, 
magically speaking, it's it's kind of like it's removing the curses. It's removing anything. So yeah, it sounds like it removes your skin. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like rubbing raw walnuts on it. It's actually you're making. So if you've ever seen the the inside of a black walnut hull, it's like inky dark. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it actually turns the water kind of a brownish color. And it really feels like if, when you wash, because it, it does look brown, but it also kind of runs clear off of your body. And so it's sort of like you are watching water drain off your body and form this kind of brown pool around your feet. Yeah, and that's that can be very like, OK, this is was on me and it's finally washed off of me and I feel clean. Like it can be very visually satisfying, I guess. Yeah. Like if you can actually see the dirt washing off of you, it really feels powerful. So. Mm-hmm. So it does that and it's, but I mean, it's also like, I should note, like if you've done some magical work to like draw love to you or draw good luck to you, like this is a, it's a straight up cut and clear. So it really will pull everything off. So you want to make sure you add stuff back in that you want afterwards. So, Mm. so like, you know, if you've created an amulet for attracting love or something like that, after this, you want to kind of like re up that amulet (laughs) and then put it back on you. So do you do ritual bathing much? I wouldn't say much, but yeah, sometimes. Now, now that I mean, I say new house, like you know, we've we've lived here like almost seven years now, I think. Yeah. But <laughs> but in this house, we have a, a kind of a you know big garden tub. Not it's not mm-hmm. a jacuzzi one; it's just like a big one, you know, in the the bathroom. So I like to get in there occasionally, and yeah, I, I prefer just usually just playing Epsom salts like nothing mm-hmm. else but if i do use anything else it's like a soap like we were talking about earlier yeah not like much in the in the bath i mean i have before but it's not not something i tend to now i guess yeah yeah and epsom salts are really good because epsom salts one they're good for your for your skin but they there are salts so it is a good way to like salt is a good cleanser right like it's it's kind of like bathing in the ocean and it does kind of pull stuff off of you so mm-hmm. so i think that's good a good one now like we mentioned the shower like like i said i do two sounds like i'll do like a tea type thing of different things that i want to do ritual showering with and oftentimes i will do you know just get, like basically i'll get a mason jar full of water and all the stuff that i want to use and then i'll try to strain anything out so it's just the the liquid left but sometimes there's little bits and stuff left in there too and then i'll just kind of gently sort of rinse myself head to toe in the in whatever it is that i'm using and if I'm using one that does like, that's where I've used like some black walnut as well. Like I make black walnut powder and add that to the the water. And it's very good for like, get this shiz off me kind of a thing. So, <laughs> right. So potent stuff. One of the other ones I use, and you don't get this in your eye kids, but <laughs> lemons. Okay. Do you ever, do you ever use lemon scented stuff or lemon stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah. I really like it, especially in the kitchen. Like it's, mm-hmm. it just, it's, I know it probably is partially like conditioned, I guess, <laughs> you know, most cleaning solutions smell citrusy, but I think that that's because of the historical reasons that like we've, we've used them. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Cleaning for so long. So anyway, sorry. No, you're fine. You're exactly right. Like pines, like pine scented stuff and lemon scented stuff have a strong, have a long history. Mm-hmm. of that actually does have some roots if not directly in magic at least sort of adjacent to magic so right. and i've talked about that with you know things like pine salt and stuff like that before so yes but yeah lemon's really good and i mean if you think about a lemon you know people even use lemons like they can use them to like clean things right you can use lemon juice on a kitchen counter and clean it mm-hmm. and it does disinfect it to a certain extent it's not like it's not quite the same as using like lysol right but, It'll do, it'll do some, some cleaning work. So, and I mean, if you have a cutting board where you've like cut onions or something like that, that you need to get the smell and everything out of one of the things that you can do is rub it with lemon juice and salt. And you just kind of scrub it with like half a cut lemon and salt. And it really strips out anything that's lingering in the cutting board. So it is a very Mm. good, like pull all the stuff out of you kind of a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's, it's just smells refreshing to me. (laughs) does yeah there's something it's there's something about i mean there's something legitimate to the smell factor here like like i mean i'm sure there are like super stinky curse removals but one of the kind of nice things about curse removals is a lot of them 
seemed to be really more about like sharp cutting sort of sense of things that sort of make you feel like they're they're clearing stuff away from you so mm-hmm. so yeah yep uh let's see oh and you can use a lemon very similarly to how you use an egg if you wanted to during oh egg. like like clearing um over yourself or whatever or over someone else yeah, you can kind of, you know, rub somebody down or, you know, kind of move it around yourself. And there are other things you can do, like coconuts is another one that you can do something with that. Like there are house cleansings you can do where you just kind of kick a coconut around the, the floor of your house. to Really? Yeah, to soak up the, yeah, that's a, I believe it's a Caribbean method. So that would make sense. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah, it would have really shocked you if I was like, yeah, it's a Scandinavian. <laughs> <laughs> Frequently used on Svalbard Island. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> How did he get the coconuts there? <laughs> I was just thinking that. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> An unladen swallow. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Oh, that really tells her age, doesn't it? Okay. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Kids don't watch that anymore. It makes me sad. They have no frame of reference for that, that show, that movie or anything. So. Okay. Next one I have done is spitting over the shoulder. Is this one that you've ever done? Hmm. Spitting over the shoulder. Or even just like spitting on the ground to break a curse. I feel like I've definitely spit like. I can't remember any like specifically like in a magical curse breaking type of thing. But, you know, a long time ago when we did something that wasn't necessarily like the. The sweetest magic <laughs> we've ever done. It involved spitting at like the specific candle that we were dressing. Yeah. So, and it was done in like a, you know, a puh sort of way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I spit in that capacity, but not in the like curse breaking one, I guess. Yes. We, yeah, we sort of used our, mo- our most evilest llama instincts on that one, didn't we? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you can do things where you spit on the ground, like spit over your shoulders is one, you go, you know. Or you can spit from between your fingers. No, uh, I jokingly do that because I've seen that like in movies and stuff. And like a lot of, you know, like Jewish grandmothers will do it type of thing. Yes. And there is a tradition of doing it. The Jewish magic is interesting. That, I mean, I'm not doubting for a second that that's part of a, a Jewish framework of magic. But I've also seen it very much in like Italian frameworks. Maybe I'm I, um, I'm second guessing myself it might be like italian because again it's like it's just stereotypes that i've seen you know it's nothing that i I can point to but it's just growing up the kind of thing i I don't know i don't even know how to describe it any better than that but you know just how like pop culture type stuff you absorb that was one and yeah you're probably right it's like more italian grandmothers and i'm sure i'm sure it's one of the things basically it's like oh granny from the old country right like basically what you're seeing is is granny from the old country doing this right yes So, yeah, and that is something that you can do. It's specifically more of like an evil eye protection and removal mm-hmm. thing. So that's a specific kind of curse. And we actually did some evil eye episodes recently. We did one that was all about the evil eye with Anthony, Anthony Pagliarulo. Uh, and he talked all about the evil eye. And then we talked to Dean Norman a little bit about that in the Italian-American folk magic episode, too. So um, if you haven't listened to those, go check those out. Those were this year, I believe. And both both kind of touch on this topic a little bit. But yeah, you can do that spitting. And I mean, in your mind, like, why would spitting be an effective way to do the curse breaking? Well, it's your your bodily fluid. I mean, that's been pretty important in magic that mm-hmm. we've come across anyway. I, it's very forceful. I mean, it has a lot of connotation to it of like, you're, be, you're beneath me, you're below me. Mm-hmm. Not to pull in Buffy here, but... <laughs> Shout out for major Buffy fans. <laughs> Get that one, that one <laughs> reference. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, I'm trying to think of any other type of things with spitting. What about you? Like what, what says, like, why is that powerful, I guess, for you? For me, it really feels like a rejection. It's just such an, uh, an mm. rejection. Like you spit at something because you absolutely reject it. Like, yeah. it's kind of like if, you know, if you, if somebody insults you, like, You know, you can walk away. That's a sharp rejection of somebody. You can slap them, which is a definite like, oh, that's terrible. Or you can spit in their face. And of those things, the spitting in their face is kind of the one that you're like, whoa. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. A slap is like, whoa. But a spit is like, whoa. 
you know, yes. it's different degrees. So that's true. Feels like that's kind of what happens to me. So did you ever grow up? I'm curious, kind of in that same vein, like body curse breaker thing type thing. Did you ever grow up with something where like crossing your fingers was a way to like either protect yourself from something bad or to break something bad coming at you? No, but I knew it was for other people, if that makes sense. Sure. So yeah. I yeah. like, I mean, we would do it when telling like a, a lie mm-hmm. and like that made it not bad somehow or made it like not a sin or something mm-hmm. like I mean, you, you know that like that trope of it, right? Of crossing your fingers. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so I'd heard the other like version of it of like, if something is coming bad for you, you cross your fingers or like maybe you're walking across a cemetery or you're driving over a bridge, you know, stuff like that, that like maybe we've talked about and heard of holding our breath for. Right. I've also heard of people crossing fingers for, but so I've never really done that, but I've, I think honestly, I think Beverly does it in it in the Stephen oh, King book. Okay, I've recently reread it. She crosses her fingers for something that's you know, and it, there's a lot of like little childlike talismans and tokens and things like that in that book that I really like. So yeah, it, it's probably in there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, yeah, it's really interesting. I'm sure that you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, the crossing the fingers. I mean, it is this. It's one. It's a cross, and you know, crosses predating christianity even like have a sort of repelling evil quality they're sort of a, a mm-hmm. block they say no further they go no you go no further right it's kind of like an x in some ways right and so when you cross your fingers you're kind of doing that too you're sort of putting a block it's sort of a stop but it is interesting that it can also sort of be the like breaking you know breaks the pathway of of a curse it stops it from moving the way it's supposed to move and i think that's really interesting so mm-hmm. And it reminds me a little bit of a version of it that I've heard. So one one that I've heard is that you cross your fingers and you turn around three times. And if you do that, that'll kind of remove bad luck or, you know, again, evil eye kind of stuff from you. Have you heard that one? Yeah, I have. I, I could not tell you where, but I've definitely heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, there's just something about that spinning around three times. And I think, again, it's that sort of like you have to disrupt the pathway and do something confusing. It's sort of like... I don't think, I don't know if you've seen this movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once, but. I haven't yet. I keep meaning to, and I just super, haven't yet. Super great movie. I, like, I know. I really want to see it. But like one of the whole things is like, in order to get these like weird superpowers temporarily, um, because you're basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to bridge a, a gap between two different universes that, you know, different versions of you exist in. So the version of you that became a Kung Fu master in one universe is like 17 universes over right and you need to bridge that gap and the only way to do that is to do something so unpredictable that it sort of short circuits all of the gaps at once and so like it's sort of like oh if you just squeeze hot sauce up your nose it'll make you (laughs) the kung fu master for that moment Um, okay you know you just have to watch the movie it's so good (laughs) that's kind of what i think is happening here is like you know we don't normally think of somebody like suddenly crossing their fingers and turning around three times we're like what what's going on what's it seems weird it's kind of like the curse at that point. It's almost ridiculous. The, the ridiculous thing in mm-hmm. Harry Potter where you've done something that sort of disrupts its ability to do anything. So, so there's that too. But it there, like takes the, the fear away from it. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of, it's almost makes it silly, right? It's mm-hmm. almost a game now. So, um, and there are, there's also a version of it where you put your two fingers together, your index fingers together and make a bridge and then somebody cuts through it. Uh, and when hmm. they do that, it breaks the it breaks the curse as well. Okay. So that's one way. And then crossing your fingers and like stepping backwards or moving backwards can also have that effect. Yeah, I found that one in an, I think an Ozark in the Ozark collection from Vince Randolph. Cool. Yeah. I love hearing all the Ozark ones. They're always <laughs> weird. <laughs> they are. They're quite. They're quite interesting. Yeah. There was one I read that was interesting because I was looking for like curse information in it and. Kim Cross one where it was like, like a man who who seduces young women will curse his family or something. It was like, hey. dude, like, I mean, you're not okay. wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was interesting. So yeah, uh, okay. So those are all ones that I've had some experience with, um, but there were some other interesting ones I kind of ran into that I have a knowledge of or that I have 
there's one of them that I, a, ver, a version of one that I've done before, but I'm curious what you you know about these or have heard about these. If, so do you know anything about the tearing of dollar bills to break curses or ripping clothes to break curses? Oh, no, I've not heard the clothes one. I feel like maybe I've heard of the, the money one, mm-hmm. but then again, it just kind of makes not non-logical sense. It makes magical sense in my brain. Like mm-hmm. it's something that's kind of, well, you're like, you know, you're not supposed to destroy <laughs> like legal tender. Right. And yeah. so there's already like that aspect of it, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't want to get too like philosophical <laughs> with like money and all that, but yeah, that's, that's so interesting. Where does that come from? Do you know? My understanding is it actually comes from sex workers who they would sometimes take the money and, rip the corners of the bills to protect themselves from bad Johns basically. And, and you can think about it as kind of like, it's again, it's sort of breaking the breaking. Like the one thing they shouldn't be doing is destroying money, but by destroying it just a little bit, it sort of it disrupts or blocks or, or prevents um, bad things from happening. So, and it's not necessarily curse breaking exactly, but it does sort of, it's almost curse prevention or bad, you know, bad luck prevention in that moment. Yeah. So, but you can do versions of that where like, if you're having bad luck, particularly bad luck with money, you can rip, rip the corners of your bills and it's supposed to break that cycle. Or if you're feeling like you've got bad luck, you can rip just a little piece of your clothing, any piece of work, or even like pull a thread and snap it. And it's a sort of way of like, boom, it's broken. So. Mm-hmm. So, but you hadn't heard of either of those. It sounds like you've heard of the money one, but weren't sure kind of about the application where it came from, right? Yeah, not at all. Again, it's just something I've kind of absorbed. Who knows where? Yeah. No, Um, I mean, that's how folklore works. So It's true. Yeah. I kind of love it sometimes where it's like, I don't know where I got it. I just know that I have it. (laughs) Right. So it's it's like, I feel, I feel cursed. And you just kind of turn to them and like, you should spit over your left shoulder. And you're like, why? You're like, just do it. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah. And you're like, I don't know where it came from, but it clearly is what we what you need to do right now. So, okay, this one I think you have heard of, and I think maybe even you've done this. I don't know, turning clothing or pockets inside out. Oh, I don't. I can't remember if I've done it, but I've heard of it. Okay. Have you ever done this? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, this yeah. is the one I have actually done, and it, partly it also there's a version of it that's like. If you accidentally put your clothing on backwards or inside out, you should leave it that way for the day if you can. I have heard that one. Yeah. But that's that's just because that'll give you good luck. But if you're having bad luck and you flip your clothing around, I feel like it's kind of a way of hiding. Like you're flipping it around. So you're turning it around. You're symbolically reversing the curse. But you've also changed what you're wearing. So now it's harder for it to find you. So. Right. You just went into like the curse protection program. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like <laughs> I don't recognize him without his t-shirt. Yeah. What did we learn today? So Curses insane. are stupid. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We Curses. Powerful, but dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So, yeah. And then the turning your pockets inside out is oftentimes, obviously, this, you know, to break bad luck with money. This is a, this is a gambling one sometimes too. Mm-hmm. So if you're having a bad run of gambling, you turn your pockets inside out and it breaks the the flow of bad luck for gambling. Okay. And what's the baseball like, one? Ah, oh, no, this is an interesting one. So the baseball cap, the rally cap, right? And I put this one on here because this is part of a famous essay on superstition magic by a guy named George Melch. And he wrote this baseball magic paper where he talked about like the superstitions and folk beliefs of some island fishermen that he had done some anthropological work on and he happened to be watching a baseball game and he started watching what all the players were doing and they all had these little superstitions that they were doing. And like, he started looking into it. Like, so some of them like would, you know, they had to like brush the bases a certain number of times with their feet, right. Before they could Mm -hmm. leave them or one, one pitcher always carried a cheese sandwich in his back pocket, you know, for good (laughs) luck. So all these kind of interesting things. But one of the things that he points out is that there's this tradition, and this is something that a lot of people do at baseball games, where if your team is not doing well, I think it's the bottom of the seventh inning, you take your hat and you flip it upside down and put it on your head upside down. And that 
it's supposed to help. It's called rallying your team. And we rally cap your team to reverse their luck so that they will, they'll, they, they won't either they, either they won't lose as badly or they'll rally and come back and, and not lose. I've never heard of this and I'm not like completely oblivious to baseball either. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, check it out. And I don't know that it's done so much now. Like it's not quite as, you know, it's an obviously like, like, like the wave, everybody knows the wave, right? Mm-hmm. But the rally cap was definitely a thing for a while in the 20th century. I don't know how much it's done now, but to be yeah. curious. So, okay. So this next one, I know you're familiar with at least a version of it, right? Reading backwards. Yeah. The reading backwards. Mm-hmm. what do you know about um, that one again I, I don't know where i got it from i'm i feel frustrated I, I don't know yeah just a lot of backwards a lot of approaching things in a different way a lot of misleading the curse or misleading or not, not misleading again but what am i trying to say like tricking it kind of yeah confusing it right yeah yeah it seems to be a, a fairly common thread through these yeah no, I agree. And like, in like the, the reading backwards, I know one version of it is comes, well, there's, there's versions that show up in like Pennsylvania, German, there's different versions that show up in Appalachian versions that show up in Ozark. But the idea is like, if you can figure out what passage was used in a, you know, magical book to curse you, if you read it backwards, it un- removes the curse. And that also works for like biblical passages. So like, if you have a biblical passage that was used to cause some effect on you, you can read that passage backwards and they'll remove that curse. Mm. But, yeah. I, I saw something similar about not magic where if you find the, the string that was used, you know, and the not magic was used against you, if you just untie it, then it, it works similarly, similarly. <laughs> yeah, for Sorry. sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's all part of it is you can kind of reverse it through that you know, no, knowing how it was formed, you can kind of basically reverse engineer it and take it apart. So, right. So I think it's neat. And it's a practice called reading free and accounting backwards is another one too. And I ran into that one, I think in the Frank Brown collection of North Carolina lore, where they talk about um, if somebody curses you, you start counting backwards. I think they said basically from 49, but you can do it from, you know, whatever number is significant for you and you count backwards and it dissipates the why, curse. Why 49? I think it has to do with the fact that it's seven times seven. Oh, okay. So it's a squared seven. So there's something to that effect that that would make some sense there. So in seven, oh, I should say seven is usually considered a whole or a complete and a holy number in a lot of mm-hmm. biblical traditions. So, uh, so yeah, so that's one. And yeah, the counting backwards as well. So counting backwards and reading backwards, reading free. But what about burying things in dirt? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty popular. That was one for that I came across a lot for if you broke a dish, which is supposed to be bad luck to mm-hmm. kind of to break that bad luck, you would bury it. Yeah. The, the broken dish that is. Yeah. And it was, and so why, why are we doing that? What, what does that do to the, the power of the magic there? I don't know. I mean, I guess it, I would say, I mean, I, I can't say this is for sure what happens, but to me, it would seem that it like it grounds that energy. I mean, it also kind of covers it up and, Sends it back to the earth instead of <laughs> coming for you, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> right. Okay. I mean, do you, do you have a different like interpretation of that? No, I don't. I think that's, I think that works. I think it's more for, for me, like that's very much kind of in the line with, it, but also because the earth is so big, like mm-hmm. again, it's kind of, you send it, it's sort of like you, you send it on, on a, on a journey, the greatest adventure, you know, like you're kind of sending it <laughs> off into the, into the dirt and sort of like it, it will take forever for it to ever come back to you. Right. It can never make its way back. Cause it has to pass through all this earth first. Oh, it's like the, it follows demon a little bit. <laughs> yeah. We're okay. just going to work in as many film references, but we haven't done Emperor's new groove yet, but the night is young. I'm sorry. Um, That's just how I am. <laughs> it's how we operate. If you've been with us it's this just, long, you know that. That's just how I be. Yep. So yeah, so burying things in the dirt. So so if, if if grandpa wasn't nice to you, you put him in the cold, cold ground. You know? Basically. <laughs> I hope I'm not dead yet. <laughs> hey, another one. <laughs> there you go. Another one. <laughs> ah. I feel happy. You're not fooling anyone. You're stone dead in a moment. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things I want to talk about just before we kind of close this up, uh, and I mentioned this kind of towards the top of the episode, is curses and mental health. And I, 
I want to bring this up for a couple of reasons and kind of get your feedback, have a little conversation with you about this. One, we both, we both are magical folk and we do to some extent believe in the ability of curses to work. Right. But at the same time, there are also a lot of people who sometimes will blame a curse for something that probably is actually a mental health crisis happening. Their own assholishness. <laughs> sure. And if it's that, if it's that, then that's what it is. And you know, they need to change and be better. But in the case where it's somebody's mental health, like I don't want people to think like doing magic is the solution to that problem. I want people to understand, like if you really feel like you you're treading water, you like you can't get your head, you know, up above the water line. Like the thing to do is to seek out mental health help from a professional because they're going to be able to give you some guidance that's much much better than like hmm, just rub an egg on it it'll be fine you know <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time like if you're a magically minded person i also don't want to say like you know that you can't also incorporate magic into this i'm just saying both things uh can work hand in hand actually and kind of the cool thing about it so this is something you know when we were working on your egg cleansing last night by doing the reading first and stuff like that, we were able to kind of name some of the problems that we thought were, were coming up. Right. Right. And as you have often pointed out, names give what? Power. Right. If you can name some of your problems, that gives you some power over them. Not maybe a lot, but at least something like being able to say like, Oh, I have this disorder. That's, I mean, you, you, I mean, I think you've talked about this before, but like getting an adult diagnosis for mental, mental health issues, right? It's, it's mm-hmm. not just a vanity thing, <laughs> right? Right. It's not just yeah, being it's, able to, you know, I don't know. You, you, yeah, you tell me, I'm sorry. No, no, it's, it's frustrating. I'm still trying to get a diagnosis. I don't know what's going on with me, but I'm committed to getting to, you know, some mental health professionals as well as, other health, you know, like physical health professionals in the the coming year. Um, I'm just determined to like get on top of my health, you know? Um, but that can be really stressful because a lot of doctors treat you like you're making stuff up, Mm -hmm. like you're drug seeking or that you're like, you've been watching, you know, too much (laughs) internet, I guess, like too many, I don't know. YouTube videos or something, TikTok videos on like pop psychology. And it's, it's not that, and I'm, you know, I, I try not to go in with like using certain words. So they, they don't think that I'm like <laughs> trying to get a certain diagnosis, I guess. Cause mm. I don't know, I guess I just, I, I don't know. I've, I've not been treated great by a lot of doctors and I'm, and at, at a certain point you're like, dang, is it me? Am I doing something? But it can be hard to get one. It can be really hard to fight for yourself and advocate for yourself. And I don't even know my point anymore. I just, doctor stuff is is very frustrating. Mental health stuff is very frustrating. And I, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it because it is so worth it. It's so helpful. And uh, it's, yeah, magic is not a substitute for anything like that, for therapy or you know, possible medication that you talk about with your doctor. Mm-hmm. Obviously we are not doctors, but. Well, yeah, I'm a doctor, we, but <laughs> not, you're not that not type the of right doctor. kind of doctor. <laughs> I'm not a useful doctor, but I am a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, I, but using magic with other stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> and I feel, I think can help you feel more like in tune with your body and your mind and mm-hmm. more in charge of your body. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah. I mean, it gives you that sense of control, but yeah. oftentimes part of mental health is a sense of not being able to control your body, not being able to control intrusive thoughts, not being able to control this or that. And magic, magic gives you something to do. I mean, if nothing else, when you're doing an egg cleansing, you have to fidget with an egg, right? You have to do something with it. So there are, physical physicalizations of things that can you know if not be super helpful or at least somewhat helpful right so Mm -hmm. um they seem like you said sort of placebo perhaps but there is something to it so and i will also say this so and this comes from my own experience with therapy and i I should say that both of us both of us have mental health journeys we're both we're both Mm -hmm. places along our paths and you know we uh, you know i enjoy 
I legitimately enjoy getting help. <laughs> so I would encourage other people to do that. But one of the therapists, uh, the therapist I'm working with currently has me doing something called integrative family. I think it's either IFN or IFT, integrative family therapy or, or network. I can't remember. Integrative family. Basically, it's called parts therapy. And the idea is that you look at your your personality as discrete and distinct parts, right? And how does, you know, one part interact with another part and that can cause conflict, but other parts are supporting and things like that. So you can wind up with this kind of whole chorus of people in your head and that can be very loud. And how do you deal with that? So there's a lot going on there, not to give too much into my stuff, but one of the reasons I bring this up is understanding that allows you to then kind of look at these different parts of yourself and say like, huh, well, this part of myself is very, very strong. And maybe I could enlist it almost as a magical ally, right? Almost like a a spiritual ally to help me with dealing with other mental health issues. So, you know, I just like people to kind of think about like, well, your therapy can provide you with new tools, including new magical tools that you can use and, Mm -hmm. and to not be afraid to kind of like see those two things blending together, never letting the magic like override the validity of the therapy is really important. But understanding right. and being honest with your therapist and saying like, hey, I would really like to be able to do this and this and this, you know, what's a healthy way for me to do that and let them kind of walk you through that. So, yeah, I got to be honest. That's part of the reason that I struggle to find a therapist because I want to be able to talk about witchcraft and all this other stuff. And, you know, like uh, I'm worried about certain things and, you know, like the country and yeah. uh, want to be able to talk about that without feeling judged, especially where I live. You know, it's, it's not been great lately. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that can be again, very stressful. That can be a huge hurdle. So we, we get it, you know, like it's, it's real easy to say, Oh, seek therapy. Yeah. <laughs> like it's so easy to just say that, but doing it is so much harder, especially if you don't have the time or the money or the insurance or bleh. Yeah, there's a lot of things that can stand in your way, but if you can, and I just highly recommend it, it's, it's, it's worth it, um, mm-hmm. you know, getting the help that you can get. So, yeah, so just, I wanted to put that in there because again, and we, and we do oftentimes have people, we've had people who write into the show who really do kind of have this sort of situation where they're sort of like, well, I've, you know, been cursed for seven generations um, and I'm just, you know, and I know that like, all of my money is being stolen by badgers in the night or something like that. I don't know. Like and it's a certain point, like what happens is it's always, always this thing like, well, you know, I've had this generational Christian. Like, oh, that's interesting. I'm sorry. Like, what can I do? And at some point in the middle of that, you start to see like, oh, oh, they're having, you know, a delusional episode or they're, they're mis- misperceiving these things in very concrete and real ways. And that point, it's one of those things where I just have to be like, you know, you really need, somebody who's a mental health professional for this because they're going to help you be able to understand this better than I can. And if I tell you something magical here, it's not really going to help you because it's, you can't, the magic alone doesn't, doesn't do enough. You have to have kind of both sides of this. And so we just get, we get messages like that sometimes. And they just always, I always just hope, I always hope that the people get help. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I just bring it up to, to say like, I think that curses and curse breaking and mental health have some links that are worth discussing and exploring, which we've done now. So mm-hmm. do you want to take a, just a little breaky break and then we'll come back yes, and please. talk to you, listener emails? Yes. All right. We're back, Lane. What'd you say? <laughs> Don't you leave that in there. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I keyed, I keyed. Okay. We've got two emails. It's kind of two short emails. I just thought this would be fun. One very much centered around one of our recent episodes, which is all about your trip to Hungary. Do you want to read that one? Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. I love hearing about Lane's Hungary trip and I need all the details. Also from Corey about Prague. My mom's sister and I are planning to go to Prague, Vienna, and Budapest in May. So any specifics you can give me would be fantastic. Specific tour companies, restaurants, etc. I'll take it all. That's from listener Jen. Well, first, thank you for writing in about that. I am so glad at least one person enjoyed it. I really love talking about it and like sharing that with everyone. So I just super appreciate it. I I didn't use like a, a tour company or anything like that. I just use, well, I guess, I guess I would have to find out who my sister-in-law's mom works for, but yeah, we didn't, 
use any tour companies or anything like that. It was all just kind of, luckily my brother lives there and knows what to do. But what about you, Corey? So you um, went over like for teaching, right? Yeah, I lived there for about a year in Prague and I did go, I did get to go to Budapest for like a long weekend, basically and a few other places kind of in, in central and Eastern Europe. And so while I'm, while I'm doing this, I'm just gonna say, you, th- you think of like your top five things to do, eat, see, et cetera, that you remember. Cause I think that would be helpful here. And I'm going to say for mine in Prague, one, spend some time just kind of going through the old town because the architecture there's amazing. Everybody's going to go see the astronomical clock and it seems really cheesy to do it. It's, it is cool. It is really cool to see this clock that like follows the movement of the planets and stuff like that. It looks really fascinating and interesting. And then importantly, just take the time to kind of look around like that entire square is just full of history. And it feels like you're in a fairy tale going up to the castle, all that kind of stuff, the golden lane where the alchemists lived. If you have any interest in magic, all that's going to be fascinating, but also get across. So there's a, an area called Vichyrad, um, which is another kind of old area, but it's not necessarily one that, like people don't always go to this one, but there's some really beautiful churches up there. And there's a place called Libyshe's Baths, which is an over a thousand year old bath house, which reputedly is the place where the goddess Libyshe would take her baths. So you can actually go stand in it and be in the same place that a goddess took a bath, which I know that sounds like a little weird, but it's also kind of cool as hell. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. I highly recommend that. I mean, the baths um, we did were, yeah, like, priority i definitely want to go back and do that again yeah okay well you told me so you said baths in hungary right yes yeah there's a specific name for them that i cannot remember um but uh it was really relaxing really beautiful because the one like i said the one we went to had a like a rooftop pool as well Mm -hmm. so we got to see the sunset and i mean it was it was crowded there were definitely like people waiting for the sunset and everything but it was so nice what else i mean just any of the sightseeing like Mm -hmm. i I'm fully for being like that tourist, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's like, (laughs) isn't there like the parliament building there in Budapest? It's just, it's it's beautiful, especially if you see it at night kind of lit up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When we went, there were like birds flying around or maybe they were, yeah, I think there were birds. Like it it was very lit up and everything. And it reminded me of like Mary Poppins and Feed the Birds. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, birds flying everywhere. Smug, smug birds all over the place. <laughs> Always. Yeah. Yeah. So, and in Prague, one of the other things I'll say is like, take the train, take the trams, the, the, the above ground trams. Those are really, really good. They'll take you kind of all over many parts of the city. And as you're doing that, look around because you're going to see a lot of art, a lot of public art. There's amazing sculptures kind of everywhere, all over the city. Even like doors are going to have crazy interesting art. I took, a, was, I took a few pictures of different doors in Budapest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's one door in Prague that's amazing. It's like little, it's, it's just full of sculpted heads, like sticking out of it. It's amazing. Like just so, and there's stuff like everywhere like that. There's a set of stairs where there's basically people melting as they walk up the stairs. Um, and it's, it's amazing. It's really gorgeous. And like, you can learn about the history of that and everything, but just even seeing it, you'll take that moment and be like, Ooh, that's, that's really interesting. I know you're going up in May. If you happen to be going up April 30th to May, they do have Chatter de Nietzsche in, in Prague, which is the Night of Burning Witches. So they will have oh. bonfire. Yeah, I know, right? They'll have bonfires that you can potentially go and see, which is really neat if you want to kind of get around and participate in the culture. That's really cool. So I'd say that as well. There's just so much. There's so much to do. It's it's, such a, it's an old city. It didn't really get bombed very much in World War II, so it's fairly well-preserved. But, but there's all, there's lots of museums and like by museums, I mean, like there's a national art museum and there's these other things that you can do, but there's also the sex museum, which goes through okay. like a history of sex and sex machines. There's the torture museum, which is looking oddly close to the sex museum. There's, you know, the Dali museum where you can see this amazing exhibition of various Dali creations and stuff like that from Salvador Dali and stuff like that. So there's lots of stuff just, you know, poke around. You're going to find a lot of really interesting stuff to go see. For sure. Yeah. Parks, stuff with uh, statues and things like that. That's where I oh, found dude. a lot of <laughs> lore and where I found a lot of, yeah, monuments to, you know, things I didn't really know about. It was interesting to learn about. So, yeah, that's where the, uh, oh, what is it? The, not the, what's, <laughs> what's, the what's that bird called? The, not the, the turul. Turul, that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
that's where you kind of learned about that. And the sculptures, I will say this, the sculptures in Budapest, like any of the portraiture sculptures are like super intense. They're like, so like the, the faces are so well sculpted and like intense looks like smolderingly fierce looks. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just beautiful there. I really yeah. loved it. It's great. Also, um, I'll say eat at a McDonald's or mm-hmm. a Burger King or something and just, just like try something new that we don't have here because it's really fun. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it, it is. It is really fun in the sense of like it's familiar, but not. I would say like don't like don't eat there the entire time. Like go and no, find no, like, no. you know, find like balance it like so have your McDonald's or your pizza to see kind of what the their variation of something familiar is. But then also go to a restaurant where like you can't read a single word on the menu and, you know, get somebody to help you translate. Google actually has a really functional like camera translate function. So you can kind of look at something and find something that sounds Except least- it doesn't support Hungarian. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Right. But <laughs> but you, if you try hard, you can you can find some translations. Just find something that like sounds at least a little interesting to you and just try something local if you can. So, yeah. So those are our travel tips. All right. Well, I'm going to do this last one and it's kind of sweet. We may make us cry a little bit. So, okay. Hey, hey back. <laughs> this is a little ridiculous, but I had to share finding your podcast insight has reignited my joy and passion for learning, growing and practicing. I'm still learning, but I just wanted to say thank you so much. I listened to an older episode where you're both talking about the question of why witchcraft. You described the sense of wonder and joy. The feeling of rightness when you do your first spell or ritual. The deep sense of finally coming home. I had no idea that I wasn't the only one. It actually moved me to tears because I'm a sappy Muppet. We are too. <laughs> you have reached out and touched my life more than I can possibly describe. Have an awesome day. Listener Jay. Um, listener Jay, thank you. That's really sweet. Yes. Thank you so much. Sorry. I may sound like I'm not... Sincere, I promise I am. I'm just having a coughing fit right now. Yeah, sli- slightly dying. <laughs> Cursed, as one might say. So. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but You're that fine. really is nice. It is very sweet. And and it really is that is that that's why we do the witchcraft stuff. That's why we're interested in it, is that it gives us that sense of wonder and connection and just makes the world a better, more enchanted place. So okay. Well, we're gonna wrap there. I do want to ask just a quick question of you lane if you can if you can survive <laughs> i'll try I'm, <laughs> to, uh, I'm here. a lot of what we've talked about kind of with curses and curse breaking and stuff like that one of the things that i think about a lot is like textures and sense like the sensory component of this like the feeling of spitting or the feeling of the egg kind of moving around you and stuff like that and so one thing i thought would be interesting to ask is is there a texture a scent or a sound that makes you feel safe hmm all together, I mean, I like really soft, you know, cotton, of course, but like mm-hmm. not not the raw cotton. I hate the way that stuff feels. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I, I don't know. I just imagine being like wrapped up in a bunch of blankets and you know, really cozy and like a like a vanilla scent mixed with like a woodsy scent is mm-hmm. usually what I what I like. Like when I first like when it when the weather first gets cold and you smell someone burning you know something out like a little bonfire or something for the first time in winter it's like one of my most favorite smells oh that's a good one yeah that would be in my that that would would be my like major safety (laughs) scent i guess yeah. That sounds so stupid. You can sniff if you <laughs> want to. Scent. You can smell just <laughs> you what you want. will. Yeah, there you go. Friends don't sniff, and if they don't, okay. safety, <laughs> safety scent, safety scent. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with that. <laughs> Ooh, what that is, is this? I have no. It's late. Is what it is. Very late. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think mine. I've got kind of two different things, and they are both kind of audio oriented. But there is also a smell that goes with them, although it's hard to describe it. And it's one is the ocean. If I yeah. can smell the smell of the ocean and hear it, I feel very safe. And also, this is weird, snow. If you can, if I can hear that crunch of snow, mm. like if somebody walking on snow, 
I do right. love that sound. And I can smell this because sm- I don't know. Smell snow has a smell to me. It does, um, yeah. And those two things, and they're both, they're both water, but there's something about that that makes me feel very, very like it's not just peaceful, but like nothing can get me right now. Mm-hmm. So the reason I bring that up is I think that would be an interesting thing to think about with curses and curse breaking is like not just thinking about how do you break a curse that's on you, but how do you make yourself truly safe? And like, now I'm going to, I'm going to try and think about like incorporating oh. soundscape into mine. So. Yeah. Like yours is water minus fire. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you can use that scent to kind of give yourself some protection and, and cleansing. And yeah. I can use the sound. So, you know. You can do that while you're in your bath and I can like, you know, burn something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. So just wanted to good throw idea. that out there. But Yeah. Good idea. If anybody else has ideas, we'd love to hear your ideas. What textures, sense, sounds make you feel safe? What do you do to break curses? Do you believe in curses? Do you, do, do, do curses have anything to do with your practice? Do you? You're the one who cursed me. <laughs> if so, p- please send us a lock of your hair at... <laughs> New or was it compass and key at gmail.com? Right. <laughs> I can't go where I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Or you can, or oh, there's also new world which we podcast at gmail.com. Both of those you can send us locks of hair or email messages, whatever's comfortable for you. We would love to hear from you. You can come visit us. Do you want to tell them the website? Can you get through that one? New world witchery.com. Excellent. Well done. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like I'm making fun of you, but I know, I know you're struggling and I'm, I'm trying to get us through this. So yeah. So newworldwitchery.com is our website. Newworldwitchery.com slash find hyphen us gives you all of our social media, shows you all the places that we're going to be coming up, doing appearances, anything like that that's going on. Those are great places to kind of track us down. If you like this show and you want more of us being ridiculous and making references to things, you could listen to our Buffy the Vampire Slayer podcast, which is Myth Taken. That's available wherever fine podcasts are streamed. So any of your you know, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you liked that one, didn't you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, check us out there. Uh, or you can go to mythtakenbtvs.com and that'll, that, that'll give you all of our shows so far. So. Mm-hmm. What else? Anything else? Hey, we have a book. <laughs> we do have a book. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to? What's the if name? Anybody's still here. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the name of our book? It is Conjuring the Commonplace. Very good. I can't get the rest out. <laughs> That's okay. You got the most important part. This is not the part they can put into the, this, the Google search and find us. Yeah, if you put in Corey and Lane Conjuring the Commonplace in Google, you'll probably find us. You can find it in a bookshop, Amazon. You can order it through your local bookshop, which we highly recommend. That's available for <laughs> Thousand Volt Press as well. Yes. Good, all those places and find it. And it's it's full of, if you like cottage core kind of like cozy magic it's full of that lots and lots of cozy mm-hmm. magic everyday objects and, and the way they have folk magic attached to them so uh, and if you feel like throwing a dollar a month in our hat or whatever you can afford you can do that at patreon.com slash new world witchery we appreciate the support so thanks that is going to do it for us today so before lane's curse takes full effect and she becomes <laughs> a doberman of some kind oh. <laughs> like not the doberman. Not the doberman you can be a pity how about that you can be okay i'm okay with that all right so before she transforms, we're going to head on out of here. Everybody, thanks so much for listening. Please be well on my behalf. <laughs> Why would you add words? <laughs> Just make it more difficult. <laughs> so. Good night, everybody. Be well. All right. New World Witchery is a production of New World Witchery Podcasts and is released under Creative Commons Share and Share Alike license. The title and closing music for this episode is Woman Blues by Paul Avgernos, licensed from Audiosocket.